Jia Li was being questioned by Pierre Polyev the other day in question period. It was actually funny because Melanie Jolie didn't really know what to answer to Pierre Polyev, so she had to be fed answers by Karina Gold, who's the one in Parliament for the Liberals that usually gives them the responses that they should give to people, especially Justin Trudeau and uh, Christian Freeland use her. You'll notice that when she's there, Justin Trudeau usually does better with his responses to Pierre Polyev. ...to respect your ruling, the government must hand over evidence to the police concerning the $400 million spending scandal that saw Liberal appointees give millions of dollars to their own companies. The Auditor General says there's 186 conflicts of interest in this scandal. Will the Prime Minister end the cover-up, respect your ruling, give the police the information so that we can have accountability and get back to work? Yeah. Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the House. In in the House of Commons. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, it's demonstrably false what the Leader of the Opposition is saying because your ruling was to send this matter to the House and Procedure Affairs Committee for more study. And so, in fact, it is only the Conservatives that are now obstructing their own obstruction because they don't want this to go to committee because it would demonstrate that they are trying to upend charter rights and override police independence. Thank you, Mr. That's Speaker. Right. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. It's not totally true what she said, but it's not false either. You'll notice, like, notice when she talks, she's actually not reading off a piece of paper. She's really smart and she knows what she's about to say. She's the only one that does that on the liberal, uh, on the liberal side. Mr. Speaker, the parliament can get back to work this minute if the government will just hand over the evidence to the police about this four hundred million dollar liberal spending scam. Found it interesting. They say everybody's going to lose their charter rights if the police get evidence into this $400 million liberal spending scandal. Right. No, what will happen is that the liberal nominees and appointees who engaged in 186 conflicts right. of interest to stuff their own pockets will be held criminally accountable right. and Canadians right. might get their money back. Why won't they hand over the evidence, respect your ruling, so we can get back to work around yeah. here? Yeah. 186 conflicts of interest. Have you ever seen that in government somewhere? 186. Not one or two, like 186. That's insane, man. The Honorable Leader of the Government in the House of Commons. Mr. Speaker, what's interesting about this is that there's actually proof that the Leader of the Opposition is saying is false, because in your ruling you said this matter needs to go to the House and Procedures Affairs Committee for further study, because this is unprecedented in what the Conservatives are putting forward, because, as the RCMP mentioned, it would upend charter rights and it would blur the lines between judicial and legislative independence. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives can follow your ruling and we can all go back to work which is what exactly the Canadians want us to do. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to thank all members for being very patient and not taking the microphone. I'm going to remind the Honourable Member from South Shore St. Margaret's to do the same. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. A year ago today. Like, the Speaker could just say, uh, yes, it's true, or no, it's not true, but apparently he's not allowed. A sadistic and genocidal death, death cult, Hamas, carried out the biggest attack on Jews since the Holocaust and has a hundred more hostages, bring them home. Here at home, though, our Jewish friends and neighbours have been doubly victimised as anti-Semitic mobs take to the streets, shouting, from Palestine to Lebanon, Israel will soon be gone. There's only one solution, intifada, revolution. Will the government clearly and unequivocally condemn these genocidal chants from hateful mobs on our streets? They actually banned the group that was that was organizing some of these rallies called Sammy Dude. The Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Mr. Speaker, Judy Weinstein, Vivian Silver, Ben Mizrachi, Netta Epstein, Sheer Georgie, Alexandre Luc, Idal Vital Kaplun, Tiferet Lapido. May their memories be a blessing. It was my honour to have met with their families here at home and in Israel. And on the anniversaries of Hamas' horrific attacks, my promise to their loved ones is the following. Year after year, Canadians will honour their memories. And to Jewish people, we stand with you. We won't relent until the last hostage returns home. She read all of this off a sheet of paper. She did not even memorize one name by heart.
So she's pretending to care, in other words. Like, if you're too stupid to actually remember at least two or three of the names without reading them off your sheet of paper, like, come on, man. How hard can it be? The Honorable Leader of the Opposition. She does relent every single day, just like her leader. I asked a very simple question. Mobs have taken to the streets in front of Jewish homes, hospitals, and businesses to shout anti-Semitic hate slogans. I quoted a number of them and invited the minister to rise to her feet and specifically condemn them, to stand with Jews against the anti-Semitism that has been allowed to proliferate on our streets. So once again, Will she condemn these anti-Semitic chants? Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Justice and... I gave the... It's another guy that responded. I just cut it out of the video. Foreign, foreign Affairs Minister, two opportunities to condemn the increasingly common and terrifying anti-Semitic chants we hear in the streets. Israel will soon be gone. There is, no, there is only one solution, Intifada revolution. Twice she refused to condemn those remarks. She continues to pander to Hamas supporters and the Liberal Party as part of her leadership campaign rather than doing her job. So I'll give her another chance. Will she publicly support Israel's right to retaliate against the tyrants of Tehran and the terrorists in Hezbollah and Hamas to protect itself? Yes or no? Yeah. Don't do politics about. I just want to uh, encourage all members to ensure, uh, consistent with rulings in the past, and I will come back to this near the end of uh, question period. Karina literally signaled or pointed towards Melanie Jali because she gave her the response she's about to give. But just to caution all members to please be judicious in their words. The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Mr. Speaker, if there's a day where we don't do politics about people's lives being taken or people being killed, it's today. We are all against any form of anti-Semitism, I hope, in this House. Any form of discrimination. And I really hope that my colleague in front will apologize. Right on. Don't cry, Melanie. Like, you're literally importing the enemies of Israel in our country. Justin Trudeau is letting in terrorists in the country because he wants them to vote for the Liberals. And those terrorists are called Khalistanis. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. If there was ever a day when we needed a government to stand up for what was right, this would be that day. Yeah! That's right! Let's do it! This government, this government has, has sought to divide Canadians by saying one thing to one group and precisely the opposite to another group. And here in this House, remaining radio silent on condemning anti-Semitic chants and on supporting Israel's right to truly defend itself by retaliating against the terrorists and tyrants. Why won't she do the right thing and stand beside the Jewish people today? Yeah. She didn't even reply to that because she's too weak. But the part where Melanie Jali says, if there's a day where you, you don't do that today, it's like, it's today. She almost cried because of that. And she, apparently like she was crying before talking to the journalists, she was seen crying in Parliament. She was wiping off tears like she was trying not to. But the fact of the matter is, like Pierre finished off right there by saying they say one thing to a group and a different thing to another. They're saying one thing to the Jews and then they're saying one thing to, to uh, the pro-Palestinians. And the biggest problem with that whole situation is that the government of Canada says that it's against anti-Semitism, but they bring in people that are anti-Semites, that will do anti-Semitism. If you found it as funny as I did when Melanie Jolie had to hold off her tears, pretending to care, um, comment down below. Anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Thanks for watching.